was kind of hard getting around at first because I couldn't figure out the funny diagrams that the cities are laid out on. So that took some time. Other than that, though, it was pretty smooth. There were people in the school who were helping me out, and I made friends with other international students pretty quickly. Oh, um, going to school was hard because I really enjoyed my time there. And there's a lot to do in Bologna and Italy in general, all of Europe, actually. And it was hard to make time for school, honestly. So um, be prepared for that. I, I had to pay for it when I came back. Um, other challenges, it's just, it's a different culture. People don't react the way you think they're going to. So if you think, you know, you think someone's mad at you, but really they're just being normal for their culture. So it was kind of hard to figure out where people were coming from, what people meant by saying certain things, but that's just something with the culture that you have to get used to. Okay, well, I'm, obviously the language barrier is, is first. Um, finding a place to live was tough. I remember that being really challenging when I first got there. Uh, I was struggling with the language. Um, I didn't really have any, any organized uh, place to live. I wasn't living in the dorms or anything like that. So uh, it was tough. I had to go pull numbers around the university and uh, make phone calls in Spanish to try to find a, a place to live. Then I had to go and shop around and there were a lot of places that were not ideal, um, but I ended up finding a really great place. So that was kind of tough and, and just, I guess when I was first there, the fear that I would still be living in the hostel when classes started. So, um, but that was a good experience, just finding, having to find an apartment, uh, period, but doing it in Spanish was, was a good challenge. Hmm. I think the biggest challenge was just adapting to the language. It took a couple of months before I was really secure. And also just, um, it, it also takes a little bit to make friends, a little while. So that's an adjustment too, learning how to make friends with people from different cultures all over the world. Um, yes, this is my second year here and I'm still in the cultural shock because um, you just, you think you know, even if you study online about the country and you, or you hear about the people, but you don't really know because you have to live in the culture and you have to be accepted. You have, you have to get used to the things that are different. And uh, people are used to doing things in a different way back home and you don't realize that until you come to a foreign country and you are faced with the challenges. And it's, you know, just simple things like um, trying to go and dine out or, you know, making new friends or even the educational system is way different. Um, the friends that I made, um, it was definitely worth the friends. I still talk to a lot of my friends and it's great practice for Spanish and we email and call and that's probably the best part of the friends that you make. So that was probably the best part about it with being able to learn the language and then the friends you make in an experience like that are you know, irreplaceable. It's an experience that most people don't get to have so it's something you know, a little more special. Well for me it was my first time leaving the United States and when you're in Europe it's so much cheaper to travel, so you get to see like so many more countries. And if you wanted to go to, like, for instance, I went to England and Germany and Italy and Spain. If I wanted to do that all that from here, would have been I wouldn't have been able to. So I got to see a lot. It's really good. That's my best experience. Okay. The nice thing about studying abroad is you make friends with other people who are studying abroad from Italy and Ireland, and you get a, a great group of friends that way. And I think personally, the biggest advantage of studying abroad would have to just be having experienced something so totally outside of the realm of everyday life, not just in Norman, Oklahoma, but anywhere in the United States. Um, and just seeing another way of doing things and, and being able to bring those back to the way that we do things here. Well, I, d I did get to travel some. I, um, I, I would say probably one of the best parts of living uh, abroad was my roommates. I had some really cool roommates, made some really good friends. I lived with uh, uh, all natives. I lived with Spaniards, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I think some of my favorite memories from um, studying abroad are actually the, the travel moments. Um, being able to go and visit, uh, say for example, my girlfriend who was studying in Sweden at the time, or uh, going, and going on trips with my roommates. Sometimes we would go on small trips just in the general vicinity. And that was a lot of fun. Um, so the, the travel aspect is 
is a uh, is big a big part of it. Um, Sports, if, if anybody ever gets to go and watch any of the soccer games while they're abroad or any sporting event, that's pretty incredible. Um, and for me, the food. Some of my favorite moments are, were centered around uh, food because the food while I was there was just incredible. So pretty, pretty awesome. Like for instance, at Christmas they eat frog wild, which is duck liver, like like um, I don't know how forced fed ducks, hmm. and they eat the, yeah that's their Christmas dinner. <laughs> so it's it, yeah it's really different from you know, um, it's turkey and ham. So. Um, there's just something <laughs> there's something called Andriette, and it's basically like pig intestines. But <laughs> I didn't know what it, we didn't know because we didn't speak the language very well, so we just thought it was sausage or something. It was so gross. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, in Spain, I really liked the uh, tortilla española, which is kind of like a kinda like a thick omelet with potatoes and sometimes onions. They'll make it with uh, um, different vegetables. Uh, paella was huge in Valencia. That was cool. We actually got to go out and. Uh, have, it was almost like some of the street cook-offs were almost like a chili cook-off in some parts of Texas, Oklahoma, that type of thing. We got to go out and, and do that, have some paella in the streets. Um, what else was good? Oh, the seafood in Valencia was really good. They had um, sepia la plancha, which is uh, it's pan-fried cuttlefish. So <laughs> doesn't sound very good, but trust me, it was it was really excellent. So I had some had some good stuff. And one of my roommates. Um, his mom would actually cook us dinners, like three or four per week, freeze them, and we'd get them back to the apartment and uh, just throw them in a pot, heat them up, and it was pretty good Spanish home cooking. So, I would have to say that the single biggest thing that I miss about Mexico is the food. They have this thing called a semita, which is like, imagine a huge hamburger with like a sesame seed bun. Well. Not a sesame seed bun, because I guess there wasn't sesame seeds, but you get the idea. And they have this big old cone of, of pork. It's got to be like 40 pounds. I don't know how they made it, with all these herbs and spices in between it. And it's already cooked, and they cut it off with a big knife onto this big, huge skillet. I don't know how clean it was, and I didn't really care. But they, as they're frying it up there to warm it up, they put on a big hunk of this white cheese, and it melts in with it. And then they cut up a piece of pineapple and, and kind of mix it in there. And they slop it all on there and wrap it up in tin foil for you to take home so it stays warm and for about a buck forty you could eat like a king so i'm planning another trip back there in the near future just for the semitas um i wish i'd known as soon as i started that i'd have to uh really try on my own to learn the language because i relied for too long on the school system so i didn't learn as much as i would have otherwise um, I think it's always nice to learn at least a little bit of the language, like start with some of the polite words like thank you, hello, how are you and so on. And just trying to know as much as possible about the culture before you go helps you survive. I wish that someone would have told me that it is very important to buy a TV. Because <laughs> TVs are very important. When you're abroad, they're, they're the best learning tool you have, a television. It improves you so much quicker. Um, and also, uh, I would... No, that's about it. 